All right, so we are officially pulling out at 5.52 a.m. Mark is up, which is amazing, and we're driving. The sun is just starting to peek out. This is a rare moment for us. I'm motivated in one of my favorite places. Oh, man. National Indoor RV Center, Tennessee. We have never been there before. So uh, get in our washer and dryer, replace. They're bailing us out last minute. Turn right on yeah. I-55 South, then take the ramp on the left. So the story starts right here in the top of the Bass Pro Shop restaurant when Sue and I were having a relaxing day the day before and all of a sudden she says to me, you know, if we don't get our washer and dryer replaced by National Indoor by swinging by Nashville, we're not going to get it for months because we know how everything works trying to get anything done in Milwaukee. It was at that exact moment that I knew she was right and I had no expectation that I'd be able to get in last minute to get something like this done that is relatively discretionary but I thought what the heck I'll call him anyways. So I call and I end up getting Perry the parts manager in the parts department and he verifies that they in fact have the washer and dryer in stock. Now, because it was after hours when I was talking to Perry, I was unable to talk to the service department to see if they had the time to put it in for me. But you know what? I know how National Indoor is set up, and they have a campground with 50 amp plug-ins for people like me that are kind of stuck on the road with decisions that need to be made about repairs. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to take a chance. So we got up super early in the morning, which I never do because I don't like driving at night. But I wanted to be there, Johnny on the spot in the morning. I had told Perry to save the washer and dryer for me. And I would in fact be there in the morning as soon as I could. And you know what? During the time we were driving, they made the magic happen for them to start working on it the minute we got there. It's a temporary sign. It's wood with oh, yeah. sandbags. Now, according to satellite, we are going through the forest. Yeah. Going through the forest. Is it the mothership? It's a mothership. Service. RV service vehicle parking. So I'm going to turn right and go in one of these lanes. And it's got the arrow going in my way. And I'm going to drive up to the stop sign. Okay. Look at how big this place is. All brand new, too. That's just wild. This yeah. Just a forest. Right. I took some screenshots of the arrow in the middle of the forest. Wow. Yeah. Okay, first thing I noticed an improvement already. Yeah. Be because <laughs> okay. last time there was Kleenex boxes all around here, and I'm thinking, you know, when you're paying and you got to start crying, but that's a good sign. So yesterday we were in the Bass Pro Shop in Memphis. Tennessee yeah. and we were sitting at the table 
and I was feeling the energy inside the pyramid. And my wife says to me, she says, you know, rather than waiting until November to get our washer and dryer replaced, and or it's April right now, right, or have it done in Milwaukee and then end up with a pig and a poke, you know, I'd have to buy it at Camping World. We decided that we would throw caution to the wind and, and give National Indoor in Nashville a call. And lo and behold, here we are, queued up. They're gonna pull, we, you know, just on a moment's notice, we called them and we said, hey, can you help us out? We're full time. We're gonna replace the whole shooting match. And uh, it's either you guys or, or, or nobody. We won't do it until our return trip from Wisconsin to Florida. And here we are. So we're going to walk around and check this place out. When we first drove in, we drove in on the south side of the building. And this, in fact, is the west side. And these are all the entrances to get in to store your motorhome in between uses. As we go around the corner here, you're going to see plenty of product here. A lot of Class B's, Pleasure Way, Gretsch. Uh, we're going to be driving by some Integra and Winnebago Class C's and those are just the names of the new equipment that they sell. They of course always have all brands of uh, used equipment and anything that was a trade-in. Uh, this side of the building here, which is the east side, continues the theme. Those are all doors to be able to drive in to store your vehicle. We're going to get a quick glimpse of what the wash area is right now at this time. Remember, they've only been up and running for two months. So this corner is where they're cleaning them up. And then right around the corner when I turn here is going to be the surprise. And the surprise is some subscribers that made Sue and I feel special by saying hi to us. Dottie and Don, thanks for taking the time to say, hey, we watch the channel. Now off to the right here is where we eventually ended up parking and staying overnight after we successfully had our washer and dryer installed. And we're going to shortly take a left hand turn here and go down the million dollar highway here because there has to be 20 plus million dollars worth of uh, inventory here between Fleetwood, Winnebago, Holiday Rambler, Integra, Numar and American Coach that they sell new in addition to the stuff on the lot that was taken as a trade-in. Well, oh, oh. Holy smokes. Very nice. Yeah. Look at this. Most important thing again. Oh. They got popcorn. Woo! Yeah. Popcorn and carrot. This is yeah. important. Yeah. That's all I need. I'm gonna have the Kona blend. And if you'd like to know what that means, you should watch one of our segments on our Hawaii cruise we went on to find out about the island of Kona. Sue and I just started to explore the interior of the brand spankin' new Lebanon, Tennessee location of National Indoor. And I'm looking at this room here and you can see that they don't even have their signs on the wall. This is like when you move into a new home and you position the pictures where you think you're gonna hang them and you just kind of see if that's the good spot. But check this room out. This is the kind of company you're dealing with, with National Indoor, that puts together uh, a room like this for their employees to be able to have meeting and constant training in terms of uh, what they need to do to have a successful organization and a successful outcome for their customers. So I guess this is proof in the pudding that this place literally just opened up. I don't know when, I'll find out and I'll splash it on screen. But I'm sure this back part here is all of the storage for all the different rigs. And Miles, in fact, will be somewhere on that back row where all the service doors are. I'm gonna be walking there shortly. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm looking this way. I even got my glasses on. See if I see Miles. Maybe that's him there. Nope, that's not. Maybe they're throwing it in outside. I'm gonna have to find them. Listen to that thing purr. Washer and dryer was installed of June of 2013. Our unit was purchased by somebody in November of 2013. So it's been in service almost 10 years. And because we're full time the last six years, we've been using the heck out of it. It's expected, you know, it's uh, the washers and dryers are very small units. They're bouncing down the highways. Uh, to get almost 10 years out of it actually is pretty good, I think. I'm switching brand. I went to the Splendid. We had the Whirlpool on IRV2.com. Folks complain about the Whirlpool. Uh, I guess I'm not complaining. Wish I never had to replace it, but we did not have to have it repaired. He's well, having so much fun. I have so much to say. You know, we're, we try to not have so much editing to do after we film something like this, but I have this rush of thoughts. And the first is, is that this place is so brand new. Everything is squeaky clean. I mean, I'm walking around here. I'm slipping around. It's so shiny and clean yet. But yet you can tell that this is the calm before the storm mm -hmm. because this place isn't even totally wired yet and uh, and it's nice and quiet in here there isn't a bunch of rushing around and not a bunch of lift trucks and beeping and everything happening but yet literally every uh, rig or excuse me every stall has got a rig will probably be over here in a campground spot later on when we're done being repaired uh, but if you do have to use a dump station, right on this end is the dump pit. The wash crew works outside here, but I noticed that not only do they have the uh, pressure washer set up, just like everybody has, but just like in Atlanta uh, on the video that we did back then, and I'll link that up in the screen, when we were in Atlanta, we actually did a video on how this machine here works. And you can see that it is tall enough that it goes past the top of virtually any coach that you bring in here. There's the dryer. Honey, did you check to make sure there isn't any important lingerie in there? <laughs> Would that be something? <laughs> All right. They had to take the doors out to be able to get in here. And here's the washer. And here's what it looks like behind. There's a stack pipe. There's the vent for the dryer the valves and the rubber hoses that are on there they're 13 years Wonder old how clogged up our vent is glad we're doing the hoses this one had a kink in it already oh really big time wow you want to show it right that one right there oh yeah right yeah there. so you know and remember it's pulled away from the wall a little bit so when it's pushed back it was the kinkorama oh it was even more kink. yeah and now the guy has got 90 degree ones oh perfect so, yeah well they're smart enough to order them because once again these guys are organized there's the washer and dryer right there yep dedicated dedicated plugs well how good are we at cleaning our lint trap let's check 
Let's take a trip in the tunnel. <laughs> oh, Not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, you know, honey, uh, your birthday is mm. uh, about three weeks, four weeks about away. Three weeks. And uh, did you figure out what your birthday present is? <laughs> you know what? If it saves me time from sitting in a laundromat, this is the best thing you could have given me, honey. Right. Moment of truth. This is not light. They're taking the dryer in right now. This is heavy. It's like they gotta prepare themselves for this. So if you think you wanna do this by yourself, you better make sure you got some young, strong people like these guys. I have a confession. Sometimes I think Mark is overkill and he gets things that he doesn't really need. So he's like calling up and he said, um, I want some, some of the, the metal tubes, are they? Water tubes, okay. He also said, let me have one of those trays that go under the washer and I'm like, do we really need that? We have one. Look at our old tray under the washer. Thinking this was a good idea. Well, Look at how it's all broke up. Well, it was. It's chintzy quality. It's very chintzy. And yeah. I'm sure it got crushed coming, bringing a 150 pound uh, washer out that you can't really hardly have any room. Yeah. So everybody on the planet would damage us on the way out. Yeah. That's well, crazy. the one that National indoors putting in it's got to be 10 times thicker than oh, this it's super thick. and it looks like they can put the washer in and then they can uh, they can slide the washer in and then the front gets glued on so, so it fits better yeah so you see these three uh, these four sides all the way around theirs comes with only three sides and the fourth side you seal it oh my god he's gonna record me okay let it be known Mark was right, I was wrong. What was that again? <laughs> Mark was right, I was wrong. Progress report again. See how we're doing. Okay. They're working at figuring out how to hook up the vent, apparently. Washers on the bottom. Dryers on the top. So it's April what, honey? About the 20, 25th. 25th. Mm -hmm. Imagine your business like this one, this location opened up from what we understand in February of 2023. If that's wrong, I'll correct it on the screen. But you look in back of me and this is what is basically the storage area for the people that store their coach in between uses. But on this side, there's 10 bays there's 10 bays on that side, but these eight bays actually are used for repairs and, and uh, uh, maintenance, and the other two bays are used for the parts department, and that's where our Splendid washers, a dryer and a washer, they literally had them in stock. That's $2,000 worth of appliances that they just had in stock for people like me to need. Now, directly in back of me is where Miles is being worked on, and they've been working on it maybe only about maybe an hour and a half something like that and they've got it all in and everything and now they're jockeying it around and they're going to be sealing up the front on it and everything and we're actually hoping that last minute they can retime our full wall slide which always gets a little bit discombobrated when we first came to the facility in this building right here is where we checked in that's where those long runways are when you first come into the property and then directly in back of Sue where she started this segment where the Nashville sign was that's actually where the sales department is and that's where a lot of the uh, the new coaches and things are parked this facility does not have a body shop like I had mentioned but it's close enough that uh, they can drive to that and do the body work and bring it back here all right at first you might think that mark's in jail but that's not the case i'm actually looking through the uh, lockup area for the parts area and you can see that uh, not only does this place put on retro bands which are stacked up right here so folks there is no longer a shortage of these things so you can get them put on of course the right thing to do is to order 
at least two new tires for the front when you get those put on. Uh, but if you're in the market to have all your tires done, looks like they can handle that as well. So on this end of the shop, uh, shows you the different jobs that they can work on. They're working on the inside of our coach, putting the washer and dryer in. Don't know what's going on here. But over here is where we were just a few short weeks ago when we were in Dallas and we had our chassis worked on. So they're doing the chassis work here. You can see somebody's getting either transmission or engine oil changed out in the back. And just like all the places that we've been to lately, they have the fancy computer controlled balancing equipment and state of the art changer so that they can take the tire on and off the rim without damaging anything. Once again, here's an example of a place that equips its mechanics properly. You've got the belt sander, a disc sander mounted to the belt sander, grinder, wire brush, some uh, air chuck drills. You've even got a little lathe there. God only knows what they need that for. But if you need it, you need it. So Sue, are you here for the show? I just want to know, how do you like? Look, it works. <laughs> how do you like your birthday present? I love it. It's not like uh, the last one. It, it actually is working. Yeah. Wow, this is nice. Wow, that is a lot bigger. I'm gonna look up what yeah, the capacity is. Yeah. And and the dryer looks a lot bigger the, too. The dryer is a lot bigger. Yeah. It is much bigger. So, all right. All right. Thank, thank you, National Indoor RV, for saving my yeah. marriage. <laughs> Got that right. Yeah. <laughs> We're simple. <laughs> well, that wraps up today's video, and it's been a real whirlwind for us. I mean, yesterday we were in Memphis. Today we're in Nashville. We got our washer and dryer installed, and we're on our way. We've got plenty of great videos coming up. We've got the famous cost to RV video that I'm working on now as we speak. So until we get to meet you on the road, or better yet, in a campground someday, we invite you to join us every Sunday morning on YouTube for another episode of Our Journey in Miles.